Have you ever wondered how biostasis works? Let us guide you through it. Medical biostasis is an advanced technology that aims to give you the best chance to live much, much longer than what is currently possible. But why do people want to live longer? Some people just love life and want to experience it for as long as possible. Some people are just curious about the future. They want to see what future cities will be like and what humanity will be able to achieve. Others think the world would be better and more fair if the length of your life was your own choice. There is no doubt that you will ever run out of things to do in a multifaceted world like the one we live in. In the end, the motivations are plentiful. But how can someone sign up for biostasis? First, you simply sign up with us and our insurance partner. It just takes a few minutes. To start, we only need some personal information. Don't worry, it's a simple process and we will guide you through every step of the way. Biostasis is achieved with the help of cryopreservation. Cryopreservation is a very advanced procedure that's still rather expensive and therefore not widely available. Tomorrow offers high quality cryopreservation with prices starting from 100,000 euros and going all the way up to 400,000 euros. Of course, this is a lot of money that few people can easily afford. But there is a solution. Together with our big term life insurance partner, we offer a subscription model which brings the cost down to only 30 euros a month. About 90% of all biostasis contracts are funded via a term life insurance model. Let's say you're 30 years old and you want to sign up. The first thing you need to do is sign up with Tomorrow Biostasis and we automatically contract with our term life insurance partner for your coverage. Now, should you pass away during the coverage period, the term life insurance will cover 100% of the cryopreservation cost. You are protected from day one. Should you pass away after the coverage period, then unfortunately the term life insurance will not cover the cryopreservation cost. But of course there are other funding options for this situation as well. We make sure that our customers have everything in place well in advance. Furthermore, there is a high chance that prices will come down significantly in the future as we work consistently to reduce the cost of a high quality cryopreservation. Congratulations, you are now fully signed up. Now, should anything happen to you where current medical technology can't save you, like a terminal heart disease, cancer, or whatever it might be, and the worst case happens and you should die, our team stands ready to pick you up and bring you to a medical research institute that is equipped for cryopreservation. Cryopreservation is an advanced procedure that uses medical cryoprotectant solution and very low temperatures to protect your body, and most importantly your brain, the part that makes you, you, against degradation. We keep you safe and sound for however long it takes until medical technology will be advanced enough that revival is possible. While we can't guarantee, that is arguably better than any other option. Then, once technology makes it possible, we will revive you. Should you have gotten cryopreserved at an old age, then revival will only be done once rejuvenation technology is available and the human lifespan is much longer than it currently is. Sometimes people are worried that life in the future might not be as enjoyable as it is today. But if history has shown us anything, it is that the average quality of life keeps getting better during the years. Now, after revival, you are free to continue your life as fit and happy as ever. Of course, this is a complex topic where a short video doesn't really do it justice. We are more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Just reach out to us. Find out more. Welcome to our 
this week's tomorrow bio webinar about you know a long list of different topics about cryopreservation kind of covering this topic from from a to z i'm emil i'm the founder and ceo at tomorrow bio and the president of the board of the european biostasis foundation the organization with which we work for for long-term storage and research topics and so on and today i will walk you through the cost of cryopreservation as you can see i'm again uh, in a hotel this time in LA for the for the Milken Institute conference. So if anything goes wrong on the tech side, uh, my people are going to probably message me and uh, tell me if there's something if there's something wrong that I can I can fix from here. But I think now without further ado, uh, we'll get we'll get right into it. All right. So as I said, um, and there we already go. Um, give me one second. There's already a screen that is not exactly correctly capturing what I wanted to do. Well, give me give me a second and I'll figure this out. All right. Um, well, that's the downside if you travel a lot and uh, do this here kind of on the on the fly so the problem is basically the the presentation is currently not not showing where it is supposed to be showing so but we're gonna do that here in a in a quick in a quick second and figure it out uh -huh. okay it's just capturing the wrong screen apparently uh -huh. All right, problem fixed. And now it's just going to be a second. You can already start if anybody wants to. You can already start uh, looking at Slido that someone probably can put into the um, into the into the YouTube chat. Slido is going to be the tool, and I'm going to show, of course, the. Um, I'm going to show the uh, the link to Slido in a second. Um, Slido is going to be the tool where we where we take questions. So of course these webinars are always giving a quick introduction, but then of course they're very much focused um, on um, gi giving people the, the opportunity to ask any question that they might have, right? Um, so this is always going to be a big part. So Slido is going to be the tool that we're going to use for that, uh, which allows not only asking questions but it also allows. Um, um, rating questions up and down so if we're running out of time then I hope that I can answer those questions that most people are interested in and while I'm talking I'm kind of fixing the the tech thing here in the background so within the next second or so we're gonna be good with that so um, all right so that works perfect now I just need to put this here kill this uh, all right perfect here we go tech problems for, fixed so as i just said um today is going to be about the cost of cryopreservation we have kind of two topics two webinars about um, you know, the, the money part of cryopreservation one is going to be about the cost which is today which kind of gives a background um, why cryopreservation um, is so expensive, how it might get cheaper uh, in the future, what this money is being used for, um, and so on. And then the next one is going to be about the funding of cryopreservation, which gives an overview of, um, well, how to fund these, um, these costs. So as I said, um, I gave a, a quick introduction um, to who I am, um, did a few tech companies in the past, but now fully, fully focused um, on uh, on, on cryopreservation at kind of these three organizations. So there's Tomorrow Bio, there's the European Biostasis Foundation, and now there's also, uh, there's also CryoDAO. Um, CryoDAO, I'll show you in a second uh, what CryoDAO does, just to give an overview. So today, um, May 4th, we're at the, um, at the cost of cryopreservation, um, and then there's another uh, couple webinars going on, another seven, 
um, covering other topics. Um, the May 18th one, just as a heads up, uh, probably needs to be moved by one day because it's a national holiday and then some people might want to want to travel and, and not be not be in front of the computer doing a webinar. So we're going to probably move this uh, by a day or so or just move it to the to the next week and then all webinars would, would push down one. So as I said, we, we have these three organizations and really briefly um, tomorrow bio is kind of the day to day cryopreservation provider It does all the contractual stuff. So if anybody's interested in signing up for cryopreservation who hasn't yet feel free to reach out at any point and we're more than happy to, to discuss and, and you know answer all questions that you specifically might have. Um, tomorrow bio does also the medical teams and basically everything until long term storage. Then there's the European Biostasis Foundation, which is a nonprofit research foundation based in Switzerland, which does the long term storage. Of course, it's very important here that long term storage is always done by nonprofit organizations so that you can you know, trust them, trust them long term. And last but not least, a new organization now is CryoDAO, which is a which is a DAO, so kind of in the you know crypto and blockchain and, and, and so on world, um, which is there to fund really, really, really breakthrough, very long term, um, very moonshot like, very basic basic research, basically research that would be very very difficult to fund in any other in any other way, where there's a funding gap. Um, CryoDAO funds that not necessarily for us, of course, but for any academic lab they can they can uh, apply, and then um, have have research projects uh, research projects funded. All right, as I said, Slido is the tool that we're using for uh, for Q and A in the end. So here, go to sli.do, enter this code, which is uh, shown here on the screen or use the QR code on, on, on the right that you see here on the screen. Um, you can technically also use YouTube chat, but um, if possible, use Slido. We're gonna prioritize the Slido questions um, to, uh, to kind of have the uh, mechanism to rate. And now let's actually get into, into the content. So cryopreservation cost or chronics cost, basically for all organization has two big parts. One is a so-called membership fee. Cryopreservation organizations have members, different types of members, um, and that membership fee is being paid while a member is still alive until the time that they're being cryopreserved. So membership fee, there's no ongoing fee at a time when someone is in cryopreservation. Only when they're alive, there's a monthly fee. In our case, the standard membership fee is currently 25 euros per month. And technically, we also have uh, other types of membership. I'll show you in a second and tell you more of those. But 25 euros a month, no matter what kind of cryopreservation plan you sign up, there's always a 25 euros per month uh, membership fee that is being paid um, while you're alive. It's possible that that membership fee sometimes in the future, and I'll show you in the end why, might go up, but we will do our uh, our very best to not have that ever go up and in fact um, including the career preservation of uh, costs hopefully go down other organizations do membership fees kind of slightly different um, elco for example has a membership fee if i'm currently not mistaken uh, of 60 dollars uh, um, chronics institute has like a one-time membership fee of like a thousand something um, and a bit of different. I don't think they have ongoing fees. They have one-time fees. Or that maybe you can also pay it on time. There, I'm not 100% sure. But in our case, it's 25 euros a month. Um, we do have another type of membership fee that we're gonna, or membership type that we're gonna launch soon, which is so-called legacy membership. And this is 100% optional, right? This will not impact cryopreservation quality or even procedures or anything that has to do with cryopreservation in, in any way. Um, it just gives while people um, like some 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 optional benefits in quotation marks but none of those um, are any way uh, in any shape or form um, in in, uh, in changing anything with the quality of cryopreservation and i'll show you what that entails in a second as well now the second part is that there's a cryopreservation cost so this includes all the all uh, the whole procedure basically when someone is um from uh, is is uh, is going into cryopreservation until a time when uh, you know tentatively and hopefully in the future cryopreservation can be reversed. So that is the cryopreservation cost. 
In our case, that's a variable cost. In most other organizations, they also kind of have a variable um, where you have different options of cryopreservation types. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you those in a second as well. All right, but this is kind of the high level and I'm gonna walk through um, kind of these two, as, with kind of these two different types of cost as the guiding principle of this presentation. And I'll show you what all of these costs um, have included. So membership fee. So that's the 25 uh, euros a month. It practically includes all the, or, or covers all the day-to-day -day, um, cost of a cryopreservation organization. I know that sometimes in the past um, people have complained, uh, not so much with us, but with other organizations that um, why is this membership fee so high, why this is this going up and so on. Um, but to be fair, I think this is just absolutely necessary. And the reason for that is that membership fees, like the monthly fees, they just cover different things than the cryopreservation cost covers. And in fact, it's supposed to be like that. The reason for that is that you don't want to have you, you don't want to have an incentive in the organization to somehow do a lower quality cryopreservation. Let's say you dispatch your SST team later, or I don't know, you you, you do you try to less I don't know um, do cheaper transport or whatever it is, right? The organization should not have an incentive to do anything where if they save money during a cryopreservation case where then the organization can keep that money and somehow you know cover you know salaries or hire another person from that money so that should never be the case so it makes total sense that the membership fees should in fact be it, it should be super super low it should be able at least in the long run to cover all the day-to-day -day running cost of a cryopreservation organization like stuff like you know hiring and training and keeping medical teams up to date keeping the SST teams on call, so while they're not on cryopreservation cases, right? Um, it, it should cover like, you know, like customer care and, and contract, uh, help with contracts and, and um, advocacy from legal and, and you know, um, public awareness advocacy and so on. So all of the things that are not directly related to a specific cryopreservation case including also if there's enough members in the future, um, R&D costs, right? Like move, make, making cryopreservation better. Um, and in our case, it also covers um, the cost for, or it includes um, the, uh, like a personal item or a small, small amount of, of personal items, um, like pictures or letters or whatever, um, or an SSD um, or like a, like a long-term storage device um, in, in the long-term storage facility. So this is the 25 euros. It covers the day-to-day non-case-related cost of a cryopreservation organization. Not of the organization that does the long-term storage, so not EBF, right? EBF is paid out of, in quotation marks, rent from the money that is being put aside for long-term maintenance of cryopreservation. Um, but that's a fixed amount. There is no, there's no advantage for anybody doing something you know, cheaper or anything like that. Um, in our case here, that could in theory be a problem, which it shouldn't be. So the membership fee covers everything that's not cryopreservation related. It also, in our case, um, we're very much um, focused on, on supporting local organizations. Um, so we run uh, local trainings uh, in, in, in Germany, uh, in other countries um, to, to help local first response teams, local first aid teams. Um, get up and running and be trained um, on, on the cryopreservation procedures. Um, that, of course, helps local members. Um, of course, it also helps us because then um, if there's last minute cases, a local team can already do part of the, of the procedures, not everything, but at least you know, the initial um, stabilization parts and the initial cooling parts, which then in the end helps uh, increase the quality of a cryopreservation. Um, it also covers cost, and this is all the membership. It also covers costs like, um, you know, like the, the, the bracelets and, and the um, and a welcome box, like all of the, the things that um, kind of, you know, are not related to the day-to-day -day cryopreservation case. Um, as I said, we're gonna we're gonna launch a different type of um, of membership, which is called in our case the legacy membership. There is. Um, um, again, like this, very important for me to say, has nothing to do with quality of cryopreservation. It's just, um, you know, 
it, it just gives us a few perks um, in, independent of cryopreservation. So what does this legacy membership entail? So first of all, the monthly fee here would be instead of 25 euros, it would be 50 um, euros. And part of that money would go into additional research support. So basically funding R&D projects, nothing really that a member gets, so basically just they decide, hey, I'm okay with paying, uh, paying more and kind of helping the overall organization. Um, you would have a larger storage space um, during cryopreservation, so um, like a small like, quotation mark safe deposit box um, where you, while people are in cryopreservation, can have um, more storage space. Um, as you know, we're um, currently in the process of open sourcing an, an emergency app um, that would interface with an URA ring. So um, if people stay members with us for a while, uh, they would get one of these URA rings, which then interfaces with the app and gives the opportunity to have um, emergency signals being sent out um, if you know the pulse data, um, if there's no pulse data, to then have an emergency signal go to your emergency contacts and to us as well. Um, it also includes um, more uh, membership, like merch, like hoodies and t-shirts and so on, um, that we will regularly um, release and legacy members would always get, um, get one. And it would have a contribution plaque at EBF, like a small plaque which says, hey, I have, you know, supported um, without, you know, without, uh, um, without the need to do that as an optional kind of wanting to support um, the, 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 the cryopreservation ecosystem in Europe. Um, and for that, there would be a small plaque. Um, if, of course, you want, it's not a necessity um, at, at EBF, at the long-term storage facility. All right, so this is membership, and we're going to launch it at some point soon. And of course, people, if they choose so want to, they can they can upgrade. But again, absolutely not needed, absolutely not um, required. Technically, we have one additional type of membership, uh, which is a fellowship um, membership for people who are like, no, I'm not yet sure if I want to sign up for cryopreservation, but I want to kind of keep up to date with this topic. I want to be part of the community and so on. Um, there's a five euros per month um, fellowship uh, membership which of course does not include cryopreservation. It's just basically, you know, a, a supportive thing and, and be, being part of the community and then later on um, kind of being close to or being kind of in the community to then decide if you want to actually be cryopreserved. Um, and then you can upgrade your membership fee, uh, membership of course, and we would give you all the money you paid during membership, um, sorry, during, during fellowship membership as a discount to your to your membership cost. And you find more of that and more on that information, of course, on our webpage. All right, so these are the types of membership. So this is the first type of, of cost. The second type of cost is the cryopreservation cost. That cryopreservation cost is due at the time of cryopreservation. So in almost all cases, it does not make sense to pay this like years in advance. And in fact, we would strongly suggest to not pay this years in advance. It just needs to be available at the time of cryopreservation. And next time in our webinar, where it's about funding the cryopreservation cost, I'm going to talk a lot about what are the different types of, you know, insurances or, you know, one-time payment options and so on. Basically, how can you make sure that this money is available when it is needed at the time of cryopreservation? Now, in our case, we have three types of, um, of cryopreservation cost. So the standard option that most people choose is whole body cryopreservation. In that case, the whole body would be cryopreserved, the whole body would be long term stored, and the cost here would be 200,000 right now, right? The second option, so so the, the, the fact that cryopreservation is so, so expensive and 200,000 euros is of course a lot of money, um, is 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 a very big pet peeve of, of us and, and me and, and we wanna make sure that over time this cost goes down at least as much as we can um, with research, with scale and so on, uh, make it more affordable. Because the one of the mission points, one of the three big things that, that um, Tomorrow Bio uh, wants to do is make sure that, you know, cryopreservation should not be, it, it should not be, well, if someone decides that they want to be cryopreserved, cost should not be a deciding factor. There should never be the time when someone says, I want to be cryopreserved, but I just can't afford it. So 
With 200,000 euros, of course, unfortunately, currently, that is probably the case once in a while. We'll try to find options there. We'll try to find workarounds if this is the case, uh, if we're uh, supporting pro bono organizations and so on. But nevertheless, this will probably still, unfortunately, be the case once in a while. So to kind of starting to offer options that are more affordable, we've decided that we're going to do brain-only preservation at um, a significantly lower cost, which is 60,000 euros. Brain only means, it doesn't mean head, it just means the brain is cryopreserved, preserved. And of course, arguably, all the important parts like memories, identity, all of that is in the brain, as much as at least we uh, we, we know. Um, and I'm, I'm, like, it's not the topic for the day, but I think there's pretty good evidence that this is in fact the case. So brain only cryopreservation is an option that people can choose where then um, the procedure is relatively similar, so there's the same amount of SST being done and so on, but then in the end, only the brain is being kept in cryopreservation, so that's significantly more affordable. And then last but not least, we have an option where we just as, act as an SST organization. So, of course, as you know, there's other SST organizations out there, um, like in the US, like Suspended Animation and International Crime Medical Experts um, and so on. So we can also act just as an SST organization. The reason why we can do that, because we have the separation between Tomorrow Bio, where you do the contracts and SST and all the procedures, right? And then we have the European Biostasis Foundation that does long-term storage and so on. So Tomorrow Bio can act as a, as a whole A to Z service provider and then just hand over the body to European Biostasis Foundation for either brain storage or whole body storage. Or we can just do the SST part. And then, of course, you, you need an, a storage contract with another organization like Cranix Institute and so on. Technically, maybe also Alco, even though that's contractually a bit more difficult. In most cases, it would then be for people who say 200,000 euros is a bit too much for me. I want to still do whole body storage. So I have a whole body storage contract with, uh, for example, Cranix Institute. And then since I'm in Europe, I want to have a local SST organization that is close by, and then they can sign up with SST only for us. Um, that's, that's, the other, that's the other option. So what does this SST cost uh, entail? So first of all, it entails, of course, standby. It, stands, it, it, has all, it includes all the, you know, the, the travel cost and the, the cost for keeping the medical team around. Um, if a patient might die in the next uh, you know, days or weeks, then we dispatch our team, bring one of those SST teams close to the patient so that then um, all the procedures can be done without delay at the time when they're legally being pronounced dead and then we can directly uh, take over. Then, of, of course, it includes all the stabilization costs, you know, the, the cool down, the actually medical team doing the work, um, the cryoprotective agent, the perfusion circuits, all the cost um, that is uh, related to this very case, to this very, very, um, to the, to the um, cryoprotection part. And last but not least, of course, it entails the transport to the long-term storage facility, wherever it might be. So cooling and, and um, plane costs, and depending on where uh, people are and, um, um, and all of that, that cost. And last but not least, it also entails um, at least part of the, the cost of the final cool down, um, where you over very, you know, about 100 hours in most cases, sometimes even longer than that, cool down the patient to cryogenic temperatures very, very slowly. Um, to not have uh, not have cracking or reduce cracking and fracturing as much as possible. Um, the final cooldown, of course, is not included um, if it's an SST only plan, because that would then be done by the organization that does the long term storage. Um, yeah, whichever it might be. So, how does this SST cost? Um, how 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 big is the SST cost or the amount of money that we we um, save and, and earmark for SST in these? different options, right? So for the whole body plan, which is 200,000 euros as the total cost, we reserve around 80,000 for SST, right? That allows us to dispatch the team very early, right? So we try to keep a lot of money for SST because um, SST is currently the biggest determinant of um, preservation quality in the end. So Meaning, um, the faster SST is being done, um, the, the higher the quality is, and that is currently um, in, in pretty much, yeah, it, it is the biggest factor of average quality in, in cryopreservation cases. So we want to have enough funds to be there early 
to make sure that um, you know the team can be kept around that they don't need to go back if something looks you know patient might do better but then unfortunately sometimes patients look like they're doing better but then they still die um, on the next day um, and then if the team has already been recalled because it looked like the patient is doing um, better um, that of course is a is a problem and uh, is, is, a, is not great um, and in fact not great it's really bad so um, we, we keep we keep more money for SST than other organizations. In fact, I think on average we reserve the most money for SST due to the fact that it is um, the highest determinant. Um, and and when I say SST, I mean mostly the, the, the team cost to be to be able to you know throw money at being fast. Um, the second point is for brain-only cryopreservation, we reserve uh, uh, 50,000 out of the 60,000 for SST. As you can see here, the, the difference is quite big. So we keep a good amount more on uh, percentage-wise on, on SST here. SST is a bit cheaper because transport is cheaper, less cryoprotective agent is need, needs to be used, of course, for the brain and so on. So there's a couple of reasons um, why, we, uh, why we reserve uh, um, slightly less money here um, one important point is that these are always the minimums so it is possible that, that someone says hey um, your whole body cryopreservation cost is 200,000 but I would like to provide 300,000 or 400 or I don't know like I don't think much more maybe maybe 500,000 in some edge cases but much more doesn't make much sense I think but nevertheless you can these are the minimums the reason why these are minimums or why you can increase it is for you know eventualities. Some people might say, hey, listen, I might die on a, on a, on a small island. Probability-wise, probably not super likely. But nevertheless, if that is the case, um, and if we have significantly more money available, we might then be able to charter private planes and so on and kind of you know throw money at speed, basically. For the brain-only case, um, we reserve a good amount of SST, which on the other hand means we only in quotation marks have 10,000 uh, euros for long-term storage, which is not a problem for long-term storage, but which might entail that people who are brain-only cases might need to wait potentially, and of course everything I'm saying is highly speculative here, um, they might need to wait a bit longer until the revival of is possible because initially it might be relatively expensive to revive and since if there's only 10,000 euros available revival um, for those people might take significantly or might take some amount longer I don't know how much longer um, until th those 10,000 euros are enough to do um, to do the revival procedure but again you can always overfund it um, my point here is that we wanted to make it as affordable as possible um, so that people can choose to be cryopreserved who otherwise would maybe not be able to and then um, last but not least for the SST only case we reserve the same amount of cost for the brain even though in this case here it is whole body the reason is the reason why we're um, we can do it at these lower costs is because some of the cost that would normally be um, included in uh, in an SST you know bucket cost bucket that I just showed you this in, on the slide before um, in this case we wouldn't need to do so we don't need to do um, the the final cool down right that would be done by the organization that does the long term storage um, also some you know documentation and legal things and so on would be then taken over by the organization that. Um, does the long-term storage so this is why um, these costs can be a bit lower than what we reserve for a whole body SST case that is being stored then in Switzerland so um, th these these costs so the, these cryopreservation costs what do they actually pay for so they pay by and large for three big things now these are the costs right from the 200,000 80,000 goes to SST for a whole body and 120,000 um, goes for, for long-term storage. So the long-term storage um, practically pays, or that, that, that cost pays for facility cost, right? So the facility, that's kind of like a, a, a like small amount of rent, like how much space you take in, in the facility to be able to maintain that facility indefinitely. It, it pays for liquid nitrogen um, cost, right? So in every doer, a certain amount of liquid nitrogen boil off during the day is then in quotation marks for that one patient and needs to be paid from the 120,000 euros um, of, of that patient. And when I say paid from that 120,000 euros, it's very important to note 
this money is not being used up. In the next presentation, next time when we talk about funding, I'm also going to talk about that the 120,000 euros that are needed are being invested. And then from the interest or from the return of that money, this is how this long-term cost is being paid so that the principal amount, the 120,000 euros, actually stays inflation adjusted the same into the future so that that money can be used for revival. And not only that, but that it is possible um, to uh, long-term pay for, um, for cryopreservation, you know, maintain the, maintain, maintain the cryopreservation indefinitely and never run out of money. And then in the last slide here, it shouldn't say, it shouldn't say liquid nitrogen cost again, it should say personnel. So last, what, what of course also um, needs to be paid for is, you know, the people who do the liquid nitrogen refill, who do the oversight of the, um, of the facility and all of that, that cost. So there's some direct cost um, related to, um, to cryo keep maintaining people in cryopreservation, which is also cost paid out of that. All right. Um, the slide got m messed up a bit, so that should be like this. Um, so we kind of high level already, I, I told you already, kind of it's just the other way around now. Out of those uh, 200,000, 120,000 are being used for the long-term care for patients and out of the brain only, as I already discussed, it's in quotation marks, only 10,000. Right, now, I hope this will never be the case but it is possible that all of these costs or some of these costs might go up over time, right? I know that there's always a lot of, you know, for us, it hasn't happened yet. Um, of course, we haven't been around for that crazy long either, um, but for other organizations, they need it over time to increase, uh, increase cost. And of course, whenever that happens, there's a huge outcry, you know, why does cost go up and so on? Um, which I think is a bit unfair because, um, you know, if you go over many, many decades, um, all the cost is going up, right? Like, you know, 20 years ago, um, I don't know, like a Big Mac was significantly more affordable on, on in nominal terms, like on the sticker price, um, just because of inflation. So unfortunately, cost does go up. There's kind of two big reasons why cost might go up. So one would be, it's possible that in the future, not sure when and if, but it is possible that um, the that there's a new method of cryopreservation, some some new, you know, a new a great new cryoprotective agent or a, a great new procedure or something um, that is just on the material side significantly more expensive. It's also possible, and this is actually already kind of on the horizon, that there will be new storage methods. Um, we're developing, I think I said it in one of our last webinars, so-called ITS storage, which is called intermediate temperature storage for whole body patients, which not sure how much, but it will probably be more expensive um, just because the, the doers are more expensive, there's more liquid nitrogen boil off and so on. So in those cases, cost might go to up due to quality increases. But when I say cost goes up, this would always be optional. At least we will try to keep it as optional as, as possible, where it, it, it should never be the case where you had a cryopreservation uh, contract for 20 years, right? And then suddenly price goes up for whatever reason you don't have the money and then you, you would you, you can't be credit preserved anymore right so we would always um we would always then offer a cryo preservation at in quotation marks within reason of course but with with in at the cost of whatever the patient has available uh, sorry the member has available who then becomes a patient so that no one ever needs to not or will not be crowd preserved due to not having enough money anymore even though they plan for that um, for their whole life um, there might be some edge cases but um, that that would that at least it should never be the case because of of quality increases because then you could always use the old technology um, and there might be some other you know quality increases that, that come up but um, not not sure what that be and then there, there are theory in theory there's other reasons so um, currently, of course, for example, we have very high inflation, right? We still have very high inflation. Over short periods of time, which that what we currently have is a short period of time, um, at least so far it has been, and now it looks like inflation is going down, so I think it will stay a short, uh, short period. But if there's high, very high and, and sustained inflation over long periods of time, 
um, then prices would just need to be adapted to, to inflation. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it would be adapted to inflation, what we just call inflation currently, which is called CPI. Um, like the, it's basically a basket of products um, that represent what most people buy. But of course, in a cryopreservation organization, that is not the inflation that we're exposed to, right? We have specific type of products like liquid nitrogen and, and cryoprotective agent, and of course, personnel and so on. So it's a specific type of inflation, which luckily um, was lower than the inflation that um, like the CPI inflation. But in theory, these prices, of course, can also go up sustained and, and for a long time. Um, over very long periods of time, there will just also be just normal inflation, right? Again, cryopreservation specific inflation, which might be different than uh, consumer like CPI inflation. But um, if that happens over very long periods of time, at some point, probably membership fees, um, if this is not being counteracted, which I'll show you on the second on the next slide, uh, why prices might go down. Um, if this is not being counteracted, then prices might unfortunately need to go up at some point. But this is not something that would happen in the next uh, year. So we don't see any signs of, of uh, that being here, here a factor. Um, but over you know, 10, 20 or whatever years um, that that might in fact happen. But you need to remember that at that point, of course, also your salary will have higher or whatever, how you make money will be more because that will also then be adapted to, to inflation. So in, in purchasing power terms, it, it should hopefully not go up. It's just a sticker price. But then again, the sticker prices for everything due to inflation goes up over years, whatever you buy. Um, and then there might be some unknowns, like, I don't know, like, um, I'm not sure what that, what, what that would be, but in, in theory, there can also be things, other things that would increase the price. Right. So why might cost go down? And here it's not why might this happen? Here it is, we're actively working on it, right? So as I said, um, it, it, it's very much a pet peeve of us and, 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 and me that um, cryopreservation cost is so high. Not that it might go up in the future, but that it is, is already currently high. So we're very much working on, on trying to bring this down. So the, the, there are kind of two reasons why price hopefully can go down. Well, go down. Uh, so go down. One would be um, if we in achieve like tremendous growth, which of course is one of the other core uh, plans of what tomorrow is working on. You know, you have like, you know, at some point thousands and then tens of thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of members who are signed up for crowd preservation. Then there's a couple of points why you can bring costs down at that point. It's also possible, of course, that it will take significantly longer than we hope or think until this cost can be um, can be brought down due to just growing a lot. Um, so then there, there's other reasons. So without scale, why we might be able to bring costs down. So one would be new cryopreservation methods or cryoprotective um, cryopreservation, cryopreservation and cryoprotection methods, like meaning cheaper cryoprotective agents, um, procedures that, that make the, the process uh, more affordable, um, potentially like a combination of local volunteer teams and, and professional teams. So there's a couple of things that we're, we're working on and, and trialing and testing that might co bring costs down. It's also possible that there might be new storage methods, right? That one of the reasons why um, cryopreservation is so expensive is because liquid nitrogen needs to be paid for practically indefinitely and for that large amount of money needs to be put aside. So it is possible that there um, and some organizations, including us, are looking into that, working on that, not actively working on it yet, maybe at least in our case, but at least supporting the research and, and, and so on. Um, so there might be room temperature storage at some point. It would be then a different storage technology, which has might have other downsides, um, but at least it needs to be something that should be discussed if in the future there might be something where you then would be able to bring costs down significantly. Um, with scale, so with the effect of growing a lot, probably that would be the biggest factor of how to really, really bring costs down, right? So um, the more people, the larger duels you can build and the more people can be stored in one large, large duel, right? Even potentially at some point like room sized ones, then the individual cost for each person would be significantly more affordable. Right. Liquid nitrogen then can be divided by less people. And since there's a, then a better ratio between volume and surface area of the duo, so you have less boil off per patient, um, cost would go down. Also equipment and the materials, right? If you have a lot of medical, uh, a lot of members, then you only need 
um, less medical teams. So, so medical teams don't scale linearly with um, more having more members. They, they scale sublinearly. So the more members you have, you might you need, of course, more medical teams, but not uh, not directly correlated, meaning the all the equipment and the SST um, uh, cost for that needs to be paid for the for the uh, for the medical teams would go down on a per capita uh, per member basis as well. And again, this is not something the, the, the cost increase is something that might happen that we don't hope that happens. Um, the lowering cost is something that we actively work on. And in fact, we're, we're on, on the far horizon, um, we might see that it, it might be possible to actually bring down some cost um, soon-ish. Not this year, not next year, probably not the year after, but you know, on the far horizon, um, we're looking into that. So this is the kind of a short rundown of you know cryopreservation cost. Next webinar will be about Chronic's funding options. Okay, so how where do you actually all get that money from? What kind of funding options do you have in the short term? Which funding options do you have in the long term? Um, and so on. Currently, this webinar is scheduled for May 18th. Um, we will probably move this due to it being a national holiday, and then some people might be on vacation. Um, so probably it's going to be moved. Um, you will get an email of the new, new dates. And now I would again remind you, please ask questions, right? Put them in Slido. Um, I will go to Slido now uh, and uh, you know, check all the, all the questions that you, you might have. Put questions, upvote questions in. And very importantly, if this is a topic that you're interested in, um, where you're you know, just getting used to it, feel free to reach out, right? It doesn't necessarily only need to be us here talking in webinars. We're also more than happy to talk to you in person and, and answer your specific questions, right? Send us an email um, to hello uh, at tomorrowbiostasis.com. Um, go to, you know, to, 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 our, to our webpage, to Tomorrow Bio, um, schedule a consultation, right? Um, with, with, with me or with one of our, our people. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions in person um, or just give us a call and um, more than happy to talk. All right, now we'll go over to answer questions. All right, so first question is, what alternative funding methods are available for someone who has been refused um, to get insurance coverage? So first of all, that will be the topic of, of next time, right? So we're going to talk, cover, talk about different insurance types, um, what happens if the insurance, for whatever reason, is not able to provide coverage, what funding methods are available then. So just real brief to answer the question. So if you're being refused from insurance, then usually people are being refused from what is called term life insurance, which is a risk insurance. There are other types of insurance, which kind of are, you know, by and large saving plan-like, where you just put money in, the insurance keeps this money, um, invests the money, and then should the person die, the money is being paid out to someone, in that case to us, uh, for, to cover the cryopreservation cost. There's also the opportunity to put the uh, cost, to, to pay the cryopreservation cost um, you know, upfront at the time when a doctor might tell you, hey, you might only have X weeks, whatever month um, to live. It's not advisable and in fact we can't really do that um, to have that you know pay that cost like many 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 years in advance but if it's weeks or months it months it is possible so uh, that's one option um, there's a couple of other unique options but we don't necessarily really like to um, advertise them too, too much because we they have they have some downsides so we're more than happy to discuss them in in person so feel free to reach out the ones that we can recommend is term life insurance, but there's a possibility of getting, um, of, it has two downsides. A, it needs to be, you need to be relatively medically healthy and it has an end date. So it's not a cure all. There needs to be always another, you know, thinking about another funding method for the long term. Some type of, you know, whole life insurance type of, of plan um, or which in some countries is kind of saving, saving, um, saving plan like and paying out of pocket, paying direct, paying the cost directly. These are the options that are, you know, the good options. And then um, there are some which have some downsides, but we're more than happy to discuss them in person. Just reach out to us um, and we, we, we can discuss more. By the way, if I'm not answering one of your questions comprehensively, right, if you feel like, hey, you didn't fully cover the questions, just, um, you know, 
reiterate, re um, just rephrase the questions and I'm more than happy then to come to it at the end. All right, um, next question would be, once the 140 C degree cryostats become routine, how much will it cost and compare to, to, to today's cryostats? So the 140 degrees, so um, the, what the person is referring to is these ITS doers, right? In fact, they're not cryostats, um, they're doers. So doers and cryostats are slightly, slightly different things, um, but the storage here, in fact, would be at around negative 140 degrees. Um, how much the price at that point will increase is not yet fully known. The reason for that is that the, the whole body doers, no one has whole body ITS doers yet. Um, very likely we're gonna be the first organization that has um, whole body ITS doers. Um, so the cost would come down to what is the price of the doer, which is initially ex a good amount higher, so around eight times higher than, doesn't mean the cost is gonna go up eight times, of course, but the doer is, uh, is a good amount of, of, of more, more expensive. And the other factor is that um, maintenance and the amount of boil off uh, is, is probably higher. How much higher will need to be tested? So um, we unfortunately cannot commit to any or know any price yet. Um, it might be that the storage cost is is double. Like the storage part of the cost might be might be in, in the ballpark of, of double. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's significantly more affordable, but we can't really commit to anything yet. Um, but of course we're gonna update everybody. There's gonna be an article, there's gonna be a video, um, there's gonna be probably a webinar um, again once these ITS tours are available and once we can talk more about it. All right, um, how do you think of reducing the cost of cryopreservation? Do you re recommend moving to Berlin when your final dates are approaching? So um, reducing the cost, I think we covered. If there's anything that we haven't covered, um, please let me know and I'm gonna come back to it. Um, recommend to moving to, to Berlin or to Zurich or um, wherever else we have a team. Um, so um, not due to the cost, Cost-wise, it's probably not, it, it doesn't help that much. It helps a bit, but that's not the primary consideration why I think moving makes a lot of sense. It, it's just quality. Like it's just like the infrastructure is better. Like um, even though of course we're dispatching our teams, there can always be the case where um, you think, you know, the doctors tell you that the patient might die in, in a month. And then we say, okay, so cool. Then in two weeks, we're going to dispatch, right? Or even, even they say in like four months or in the next six months. And then the patient dies like three days after. Um, luckily, that's not that's not absolutely common, but it does it does happen, right? So being close just is significantly is significantly better from from a quality perspective. So I would always recommend that. And if this is the case somewhere here where uh, this might come into effect, then please reach out and we can discuss the individual case uh, one on one um, and see what makes sense. Uh, next question will be, do you believe AI will have an impact on cryopreservation and related uh, research? Um, absolutely it will. Um, it will definitely have an impact on, on research. It probably already has an impact, not so much on cryopreservation research, maybe as of now, but it will definitely have um, have an, an, an impact. Um, I think there's no there's no question there, but that's not a unique for cryopreservation or for, uh, for uh, research. AI will probably have an impact everywhere for better or for worse, because it might also go very badly as uh, you know, you might hear some people discuss, um, but an impact it will definitely have. Um, next question would be, when do you think EBF will host the first uh, bodies and brains? Most members seem in their thirties, so it might take time, or do you think otherwise? Um, no, EBF already does um, host the the first uh, the first patients. Um, yes, our member group is uh, or our member member makeup is significantly younger than maybe other organizations. Um, but then again, um, we uh, at least in Europe are also significantly more known. So uh, meaning we have people who just you know come to us when they're being diagnosed with a terminal disease and then sign up last minute in quotation marks, not really last minute, but without without you know being thirty and healthy right now. Um, so these are the these are the first um, patients. So these are statistically speaking the first patients who are which are being stored at EBF, with, with the first ones already having having been cryopreserved and now in long term storage at, at EBF. Um, at which point um, 
are you to find biostasis frontal hospitals and medical doctors in Europe? This will be this will be greatly help. Um, sure, N not fully related to to maybe the cost of cryopreservation, uh, maybe indirectly a bit. Um, we're in the process of that now. So doctors, we already do have a good amount of doctors who are very open to the topic and 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 supportive and might help for SST teams and so on. Apart from our own doctors, of course. Um, even hospitals, we are already we are in the talks with the first hospitals, um, not really with the hospital, but with people high up at that hospital um, in, in, in Germany, uh, starting to also in other countries, to then have partnerships and quotation marks with these hospitals, not really a partnership, but kind of you know someone and they, then it makes everything much easier. Um, so that will definitely be a strong focus of us um, going forward. Um, what is the estimated cost of transferring a body from Brazil, for example? So the cost of transporting a body is somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 15,000 uh, euros. Um, doesn't really matter from where to where, of course, as long as it's from continent to continent, right? If, if it's from, like, I don't know, Italy to Germany or Italy to, to, uh, to Switzerland, that, of course, is significantly more affordable. But if it's, you know, transatlantic, for example, um, it's about in that range. Um, but we do not cover Brazil, so we don't have medical teams in, in Brazil, so Brazil is currently outside of our, of our coverage area. Um, if someone is in Brazil and wants to sign up or some other f outside of Europe um, country, reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to help however we can, but our teams um, do not yet cover these, these regions. Um, next question is, in the last presentation, there was a plan to provide transport service across the U.S. Uh, will there be a service for U.S.-based cryos or will there be a facility too? So we are indeed currently in the process of, at least in some regions of the U.S., starting to cover, uh, cover SST, um, meaning people can sign up there. The regions will be uh, New, New York Metro, Southern Florida around Miami, then Portland, Seattle, and uh, Bay Area around San Francisco. Um, that will so we will not cover the continental U.S. yet. We will cover just these regions, right? Because then we're going to have teams. We're going to partner with organizations there locally um, to cover these cover these regions. Um, once that is possible, people can sign up from the U.S. as well if they're in one of those regions. Um, Long-term storage in uh, in the U.S probably not soon-ish. We're kind of thinking about it and are in the process of, um, of you know, talking, but these are early talks and it is something that we want to do in the long run. Don't get me wrong. In fact, we want to have multiple storage locations um, to also counteract geopolitical risks that, you know, over many, many decades might be a factor. So um, probably at some point that will be something that we, we, we will do and we want to do it. But focus right now clearly on SST. This is where the biggest, you know, if storage is here or there, that's not the big factor. SST is the factor where um, you either, you know, where, where, you, where you increase quality. And this is what we're definitely focusing on. Um, um, what conference in LA are you at? Uh, just curious, since I'm in San Diego and interested in all related biomedical fields. Um, it was the Milken Institute conference. Um, not, not a biotech conference, but... Um, uh, you can look it up online, uh, a lot of different things. And since part of what we do is, uh, you know, advocating for this topic, making sure people, you know, more people know about it. Um, this is why I'm, I'm usually here. And actually, there was a good amount of uh, well-positioned um, people who are quite interested in this topic, which, of course, helps the topic not only from maybe they're going to fund some research, um, but also just in general, um, it's good that this topic has more supporters and, and uh, people who are interested in it. Um, I'm interested in research uh, like uh, that done by uh, Canice Bio, low temperature quick gas preservation. Um, yeah, so what they do is um, so-called persiflation, where you basically use the, the vasculature of an organ, for example, and flush cold helium through the vasculature. And since now the, the blood vessels is, of course, very, there's a lot of, you know, high surface area, you can cool things down really, really quick. Um, if this can be employed for whole body preservation, not yet clear, um, but I, I, I know the people well um, who, who do that. We're in, in regular contact. Uh, we see each other on a lot of, uh, not this conference, but uh, other conferences. Um, so if this is something that um, makes sense for either brain preservation cases or whole body, like you know human cryopreservation cases, then we're definitely going to um, you know, 
stay up to date and if it turns out to be great technology that can be employed we're gonna we're gonna implement it all right um, apart from technical um, progress on chronics that might um, that that might could bring the average cost down are you in investigating on financial engineering uh, methods of your uh, oh, of your own or EBF or other structures such as uh, meticulously picked investments for whole life insurers and uh, and or your own design term life insurance and so on. Yes, all of the above. Not something that we do day to day, but I think in the long run, it does indeed make sense. And when I say in the long run, I mean, once you have a couple thousand members, then indeed it makes sense to have your own insurance. Not everything, but you can have you can partner with uh, reinsurances like Swiss Re or Munich Re um, to then have your own insurance in quotation marks, even though the risk carrier is someone else. Um, so, so that I think makes sense. Um, it also makes sense to have certain types of long-term investment vehicles. Um, all of that is stuff that we're looking into in the process of doing. The first thing will probably be a long-term asset management organization that for people who are go into cryopreservation, if they want to keep some of their assets in a, in a vehicle, uh, in an organization that then would return those assets once they're being revived. So that would probably be the first one. Um, the second one, it would be great if there would be some type of uh, investment vehicle where your money would be invested um, and then paid out uh, at the time of death. So it's kind of like an investment, like a brokerage account with an automated payout method. A bit more difficult to set up. Um, that's something that we are tentatively looking into. And then the insurance things would probably, those would be a bit further down the line. Um, long term, I, I would like to have all of those, um, where you then have basically tailor-made solutions for uh, cryopreservation uh, funding, which I think would help a lot of people. But it's definitely going to be a long-term thing. This is not something that is going to be you know, around in the next, in the, in the short term. Um, I would like to see regular reports on technology and understand requirements for adaption uh, for your clients. Um, so we don't we don't do reports. We do, of course, on on the EBF side. Um, there's always reports once we fund once we fund research. Uh, CryoDAO will also do that. And on on um, on the tomorrow side, it's going to be mostly like you know articles and and uh, videos. Um, so stay tuned for these three things: CryoDAO webpage, uh, which is cryodao.org, then EBF ebf.foundation there's there's always if we fund research then there's a report on that and on the tomorrow side it's going to be articles which are on our web page um, or videos on on youtube um next one would be um let me see to not skip anything um daniela from uh, cryros told me that cryopreservation could go down to five thousand euros for whole body and one thousand for brain if democratized is it possible Possible, probably, but we're talking millions and millions of people being cryopreserved um, if you want to go down to these costs. And probably these exact prices, that would be really the lower bound. Because think about it, cryopreservation at minimum is a large scale operation where you need well-trained people for a couple of hours, right? If you look at the main op a major operation, Major operations, 5,000, that's really, really low, right? Usually it's a bit higher. So the lower bound of that would probably be what a major operation costs, at least if you want to do it with high quality, because if at these sizes you would have more regulation, you would have quality metrics that you need to adhere to, right? All of things that would need to then um, be also reflected in the price. And at the same time, you would have tremendously large, I'm, I'm talking like, billion-sized um, cooling, either either liquid nitrogen or maybe at that point electric. Um, so, and, and of course, if electricity becomes very, very affordable in the future, like fusion reactors and so on, um, or super, super affordable solar, um, solar um, it, it, these ballparks are probably possible, but I would say it's probably on the lower bound, probably would be a bit higher, but it's not unheard of. There's an article by, from Ralph Merkel, um, if you want to look it up, many years ago on the Alco web page that um, calculates how cheap cryopreservation could become. Maybe that's actually that 
that, that was the article that was here referred to, what the basis of that is. Um, Ralph Merkel um, on the Alcoa webpage about what coral preservation could could cost. Um, it's kind of in that ballpark, but we're talking we're talking tremendous amount of scale here that um, I don't think is realistic to reach anytime soon. But we're working towards it. So my hope would be that this is indeed kind of the you know the long term cost, but it's going to take time. Um, when will legacy membership be available next three months? Uh, will legacy membership be mentioned at the EBF um, um, webpage? Um, um, no, membership. the membership is always on the tomorrow side. So we will, of course, announce the membership once available um, on, on the tomorrow.bio webpage. Um, EBF doesn't really have anything to do with membership. Of course, they have they do long-term storage, whereas um, membership is on the on the tomorrow side. Um, so it's going to be announced. We're going to send, of course, a newsletter. There's going to be a webinar about this topic and so on. So it's going to be announced everywhere. Um, next three months, um, yes, very likely. Um, we're going to probably do it within the first half of this year. So stay tuned. Um, do you have MRI, CT or a like in your facility to examine the structure of brain bodies? Yes. Uh, we are currently, to my knowledge, the only, oper only organization that has an in-house uh, CT scanner for, um, for uh, quality, quality metrics. Um, that is uh, uh, yeah, a medical-grade medical uh, CT scanner um, for, for quality assurance of, uh, of preservation quality. Um, and then um, please give again the contact details at the end of Emil's presentation. All right, sure. Um, let me quickly check change to the contact details. All right, you see the contact details here. Um, of course, you find that all of our, our webpage at tomorrow.bio as well. So go there um, if you wanna if you find uh, if you wanna check our contact details again. Um, question would be: What would the Ur ring do? Uh, would it like would it be like some sort of life alert exactly so um, it would be an app that interfaces with the Ura ring and the Ura ring has a pulse measurement sensor so it measures pulse and if there is no pulse data then it would send an emergency signal of course there's a lot of like details about how to control false positives and false negatives um, so that's why we're open sourcing currently and you know, working on making this app an open source project that we developed so to make it better and kind of control for all these um, um, false positives and false po negatives. But this is what the wearing would do, right? Um, three global uh, locations and the climate change problem. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. So yes, we wanna, I mean, I'm interpreting. interpreting. Um, yes, we're gonna have multiple or we plan to and hope to have multiple locations in the future. Um, so that we can, you know, counteract things like, uh, hopefully not climate change, but things like, um, you know, geopolitical problems and, and so on. All right, looking a bit at the time, I'm briefly going through if there's any questions um, in the YouTube chat. Now's your last chance, by the way, to answer any last minute questions that you might have. Um, now I would suggest put them in YouTube chat because the order of things on, on Slido, uh, I might not see the new questions. I think actually there's a button for new, but put them in YouTube chat or in Slido. I'm gonna go back to, to Slido in a second and check if there's anything new. Quickly going um, through YouTube chat. Um, I don't think there's any questions that I have not answered. Perfect, all right. Then um, last check on, on Slido, yes. Sorting for recent, all right. Um, if you have any last minute questions, feel free to post this one now. And otherwise, I would like to in, in, like one more time encourage everybody to reach out, to keep in touch. Um, you know, either if you have already decided that you want to sign up for cryopreservation, preservation, then you know it's a good weekend topic. Do it over the weekend. Um, and if you're just you know still considering it or still have open questions, of course, then. We're more than happy to um, be your sparing partner and answer all questions that you might have um, to make sure that you can make an informed decision if this is something for you. All right, and since there are no um, new questions as far as I see, then I would like to thank everybody um, for, for joining the webinar. I'd like to remind everybody that this is a, cryo this is a series of, of uh, webinars. Um, next time will be about Chronics funding options. It's not going to be on the 18th. We're going to announce a new date um, soon. Most likely we're going to just move it to June 1st so that we kind of keep the rhythm and then um, go on 
with basically offset by, by one. All right, now, without further ado, have a great day, have a great weekend, and then talk to you soon at the next webinar or when you reach out in person.